All right, hello. Good morning, good afternoon. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Rufus and Michael, for, uh, for the handoff there. Just getting settled in here, so uh, nice to see you all here on a Monday. And uh, as the title suggests, maybe you haven't seen the title yet, but um, I know Rufus. Hey, Star Crunch. Um, <clears throat> hi, Sayaluna. Um, so yes, yeah, so for the first half this morning, I'm doing something a little different today, inspired by, uh, by Mr. Terry White. Going to be doing an audio learning stream for this first hour. So the first hour is going to be focused solely on Audio 101 basics for just recording a microphone into Audition. Good morning, Admiral Shane. Good morning, Paulina. Good morning, Sliced Media. Good morning, a witch named Morwen. XO, hey, how are you? Lima Leo. Hi. Actual Kevin. So we're going to focus on that, and um, I actually have three setups here. My standard broadcasting microphone that I always use, which is um, Lunch with Beetle Jace. Hey, Stan Arthur, <clears throat> on the East Coast today. Uh, an AT4050 condenser microphone, which is what I use for almost all recording of voice and everything that I do. Uh, and then we'll do a combination of other common microphones that are used um, I don't use any sort of USB microphones, but I do have a USB headset. So we'll use this and kind of talk about how you set this up and how you record with this and how you make this sound good. And then um, also showcase probably one of the most common ways to just start recording. You know, it doesn't have to be that you're recording a, an album, right? A lot of reasons to record your voice and things. Um, just using like the, um, in this case, the, the Apple headset microphones. You can, well, the earbuds, but, you, you know, the mic is here. <laughs> the mic part is, it's here. This also makes a good string bass if you get really bored. Anyway, that's plugged in over there. So we'll record through all of those different, uh, different devices. Hey, Neil, how are you? And uh, hey, good morning, Pam Vargas. Hey, Paul Weaver. So, yes. I hope you guys will enjoy it. So what, what will happen is uh, we'll go until 10 and then I'll stop the stream just so that the VOD is complete one hour of just this and then I will restart again. It'll be seconds, so don't leave. Stick around. And then what we'll be doing at 10 a.m. Pacific time is kind of continuing on where I left off um, uh, Friday working on that fuzzy island edit. And remember we were doing those 4K renders for those of you who were watching on the stream. We are doing those 4K renders in the background um, they eventually all finished. <laughs> and uh, so we'll be kind of integrating some of those as close-ups into that edit. I showed him some of the rough cuts of what we'd done. And uh, he was so psyched and, had, again, had forgotten these performances. So it was really cool um, to, uh, to be able to showcase that. Will Beattie. Hey, how are you? Hey, CBR Network. Yep, the one from last week. Now, it was the one from Friday, not to be confused with the one from Monday, because we found two, right? I found two of these Fuzzy Island performances. Um, but the latter one, which was a song of his, uh, where I showed we had three takes, I wound up taking all that footage and upscaling it to 4K so that we could do kind of cutaways um, to, the, like, to the hands, to the soloing, to really kind of show off the performing a little bit better. And just to kind of break up the edit a little bit more. Admiral Shane, perfect. Now I want to point this out too. It's uh, it's 904. So this is not this is not going to be a quick five minute how to start recording. I could certainly do that. Um, there's lots of those out there. That's not what I want this to be. This is going to be a ridiculously comprehensive, or frankly, as comprehensive as you want it to be. But um, really, all the ins and outs to get set up. Because to be honest, and I was thinking about this this morning, once you're set up to to record to sort of that once audition is ready to roll. Um, it's basically, let's see, so far in audition here, I th what did I say? It's like, it's like three clicks. So you create a file, you have to name it. I guess that's typing, but really consider this the first click. So it's one click, two clicks to set your levels, and then a third click to start recording, and that's it. Okay, so it's really three clicks, but there's a whole bunch of stuff that you want to set up, that you want to be aware of um, before you actually start so that you know what's happening, so that if there is a problem, if there is a glitch, if you change your microphone, if you upgrade from, you know, earbuds, which by the way, I've done many 
many a last minute voiceover with these Apple earbuds or even like the little Bose in ear ones that have the mic on them, some of the Logitechs, you can still get a pretty good sound. Again, if you're kind of just aware of setting them up and how to, how to do it properly here in Audition. So Admiral Shane, I wanna see those cues for sure. Let's, let's make this very interactive because I'm hoping that this will be a nice reference that will live here and it'll also be on my YouTube channel later today. I'm recording, uh, recording live, so I'll publish that up there as well. So, uh, cool, awesome. So shall we, shall we get started? Okay. <laughs> What has to happen first? A lot of this. Okay. So we're going to start, of course, by just actually setting up the microphone to record. And um, I guess I should put headphones on. I don't really need them on just now. but um, So we're going to do that by going into the preferences. Everybody's favorite thing. <laughs> Settings and preferences. Oh, hold on one second here. Change something on my audio. There we go. All right. A new mug, <laughs> yeah, falling. You know what? I uh, my 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 Winnie the Pooh ones were dirty. I left them in my office over the weekend, so and I didn't feel like I didn't feel like cleaning them. <laughs> I got lazy. All right, so you've got a microphone, a USB microphone, uh, an eighth inch mini plug, or I forget what that is in millimeters, or um, a standard mic, and you want to record your voice in Audition. How do you start? Okay. Well, the first thing that you're actually going to see is this, which is not very, and Pam is taking notes. Excellent, Limo Leo, Colombian coffee, absolutely. Um, so the first thing you need to do is go into your preferences to make sure that you're actually using the correct device. Now, this is in slightly different locations on the Mac and PC. Uh, on the Mac, of course, it's the audition menu, preferences, and we'll go into audio hardware. I wanna say that on the PC, I think it's edit Preferences. I think the preferences are in the edit menu, if I'm not mistaken. And somebody on a PC could probably confirm that. I was going to pull up my PC today, but I had a family member whose machine died, and I had to lend them my, my one existing PC. So we'll go into uh, preferences. All right. Now, again, there are there's audio hardware and audio channel mapping. Let's just start with the hardware, because the first thing we need to do is tell Audition what device are we going to be recording from. Now. I'm in a unique situation here because I have a lot of different devices um, that I can choose from to record with. In fact, I took one out so there just wasn't so much in the menu. I don't want to look. I don't want it to look too different from what you'll you'll likely see. So what we're really focused on for recording, of course, is the default input. Now this also determines um, the in, the default input for the editing view or the waveform two channel view or the multi-track view, and we're, I'll talk more about those in a minute, because you can record into either or. Um, and as mentioned, when you click the twirl down here, you'll see all the various devices that you have selected. Now this Focusrite Thunderbolt, this is my external uh, sound, sound device. This is running via Thunderbolt 2. Um, it has 18 or 20 inputs, same amount of outputs. And this is kind of everything. I use this for everything. So when I do multi-track music, when we were recording a week ago Friday and I was at the piano and I had individual microphones all going into this device and the mic that I was speaking on going into this device and a room mic, everything was feeding this multi-input device. Now, we also have available to us the built-in microphone and that's where I have the, um, the earbuds uh, connected to. <laughs> Ronald says RIP PC. And the Plantronics headset, which represents a USB or a standard USB microphone. Now, I know a lot of you out there use things like the Yeti and the Snowball and all these uh, variations of USB. Um, most of those, because they're, they're basically stereo and or mono devices, you know, dual channel mono or stereo. That's another good thing to take note of. Um, if you're recording a microphone signal, right, one microphone, one voice, one signal, should you record in mono or stereo? Well, a microphone signal is, assuming you're, it's one person talking on one mic, that's a single channel. So it, there's no reason not to record into mono. Again, many of those USB styled mics will offer stereo recording to you, um, but it's basically filling the left and right channel with the same content. You can always convert to stereo later. And a lot of times, just to simplify things, it's better just to record a voiceover in mono. There's no real reason to record it in stereo. You can convert it to stereo later for processing. And that's another stream. We're just gonna talk about recording today. 
So the Plantronics represents a standard USB. Now on the Mac side, this your USB microphone will likely show up with an actual name. So whether it's the Samson U1 or again, the, the Snowball or whatever, Plantronic shows up. These are standard plug and play devices. They don't require any additional driver. They don't have any mixer of any kind. On the PC, sometimes these things show up with names. Sometimes they show up as USB audio codec or standard USB audio device. That's how you know that you're tapping into whatever your USB microphone is, if it doesn't show up with the actual name. Again, PC and Mac, USB microphones these days, especially if you're using Windows 7 or Windows, or above, Windows 8 or 10, um, they're standard audio devices, so they don't require a driver. Unlike this Thunderbolt, which again, because it has so many inputs and has all this routing, I have this whole separate mixer here that controls for each of the outputs and inputs, all the various routing of where I want signals to go, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You, you very likely will not have to deal with any of this, but just be aware that different sound devices will have different options. And you can actually even see here that if you do have a separate mixer or a separate mixing panel, this will access that automatically, this settings button. And that includes on Windows, the standard Windows recording mixer, okay? I'm just going to take a second to look at some of the comments here. All right, very good, very good. Cool. All right, so let's let's start just because I'm here with my Thunderbolt. And then we'll go and we'll record the USB and we'll record the... Uh, in fact, you know what? No, let's not do that. Let me do that. Let me start here. Just I don't want to change anything. This, these are my defaults right now, okay? So we're going to use the standard Thunderbolt for in and out, meaning that I'm recording on the same device and I'm monitoring on the same device. Now the master clock, you probably won't have to fuss with this too much. Basically that's related to the actual sample clock, which is the sample rate that you see here. Now people ask me this all the time, and I told you this was gonna be super thorough and nerdy. Um, 44,100 hertz or 48,000 hertz, 48K. Which one do we choose? Well, the standard for video is 48K. All right, so if you're gonna be doing any editing, if you're going to take this audio file and somehow work this into a video, whether you're publishing a video for YouTube, maybe like Synapse, we talked about this, you're editing videos of gameplay, and you're gonna do some voiceover or commentary. Um, wiggle, wiggle, hey, hey, Pugrader, nice, Pugrader, Pugrader. Um, 48K is where you wanna be. Now, if you're simply recording a voiceover that will, is really audio only, Okay, it doesn't really have any video destination. Um, maybe you're doing a voiceover for, you know, could be could be a podcast for a, a radio styled commercial, something that doesn't involve video. Well, the standard for that, and the standard for iTunes, and the standard for Spotify, and the standard for uh, Pandora, is and the CD standard. That's where this comes from. Is forty four one. So again, if video is not part of your bag, it's not part of the thing that you're going to be doing. Hold on a second. There's no reason not to be recording in 44.1. I just changed my sample rate, so some of my settings here changed. Um, again, for our purposes, uh, we're going to keep this in 48K because I, I tend to tie everything to video. Can you convert later? Yes. Can you still upload 48K MP3s to places? Yes. But just be aware that if really there's no video component to what you're doing, you probably want to be in 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 uh, forty four one. Okay. Now um, the other thing too to keep in mind is that if you were on the stream when I was talking about uh, talking about uh, high sample rates, and you can see here ninety six k, one hundred ninety two k, and I see Admiral's uh, actual Kevin is chiming in a little bit here. Um, there is definitely more high-end presence, and there's definitely more air and space in the sound at 48K. This is something that you will actually perceive, even if you're older, like me. <laughs> and as frequencies and uh, your ability to really hear high frequency tends to roll off as you get older, unless you have super ears, um, 48K, it, it sounds better. So, as a general rule anyway, like I, I like to record at 48K, 32-bit. That isn't ultimately how I deliver files, but it's just a better overall sound. So I'm, I'm gonna show you the conversion towards the end of our hour here as well. 
So remember that. If you're not going to be doing anything, you don't want to have to convert, you're just going to be doing a standard audio file that's going to go to just an audio destination, you can use 44.1. By default, I'll typically choose 48K because that works with everything else. Okay. So all of this is set in here. Now one more thing before we leave this dialogue, all right, <laughs> uh, is the buffer size. Now I'll show you some examples of a, of, a, of a buffer that's too long. Now I think the default here is 512. The buffer size is basically what that determines when you are talking into a microphone recording or recording into a microphone recording music or whatever, and you've seen me do this. The time that it takes to go from the microphone through the cable into the sound device, into the machine, into the application, there's some latency there. And this is, it's, you can see, it's measured in samples. There are 48,000 samples per second. So, obviously, the greater the buffer, the more delay there's going to be with the signal actually hitting the software. Now, if you don't need to monitor yourself live, in other words, you're just going to talk on mic, record it and edit it after the fact, it doesn't really matter what that, what that buffer is. The higher the buffer size, let's say we went to 512 or 1024 or 2048, the less chance you have for any kinds of audio dropouts. Now, when we talk in Premiere about the fractional playback resolutions, you've seen me do this a lot. Uh, fractional playback allows you to do things like play 4K, 6K, 8K on a, on a slower machine. You're not seeing all the pixels, but when you stop, it'll show and reveal all the pixels, all the fidelity, everything like that. Well, that's to prevent dropouts and things while you're editing. Well, the buffer size kind of works in the same way in the sense that more so when you're mixing, really. But when you're, if you find that you're, you're getting dropouts, you've seen me get those dropout indicators before, or like the performance in the app is just, it's sluggish. It's not very fast or it's just, it feels like it's going to crash. Try increasing the buffer size. Now, the, the default, I don't even know what it is anymore. It may be 256, it may be 512. These are a bit, these are a bit slow, and I'll let you hear in a minute why. Because if you're trying to monitor yourself while you're recording, if you've got a buffer of 512, you're actually going to hear like a slapback. You're going to hear yourself twice. It's going to be very hard to record that way. So the lowest setting you can get, the better. Now, not all machines can handle these extremely low buffer settings. So 128 is kind of a comfortable medium. That's what I'll set everything to by default. That usually is it's. It's fast enough, you're not going to have any dropouts or delays, and it should still be enough where if you have to monitor yourself, it's not, it's still doable. Even for a singer, you know, a singer doesn't want to hear their voice sort of compromised. That should be pretty good, all right? So these are all your basic settings, your input, your output, the clock will set automatically, the buffer size, and the sample rate, okay? All right, so let's click OK on this. Now again, I'm, I'm, I'm using my microphone here. This is my AT. 4050. All right, so this is a an XLR microphone feeding into my Focusrite Thunderbolt. Jan Eric, isn't a higher buffer better as far aka more in memory? I am confused. No, no, a higher buffer is not it's only it's only better. So there's there's two sides and I want to get to the recording on Eric, but I'll answer that right now. No, a higher buffer is only good if you find that you're when you're playing back, you're you're dropping out samples or or things are skipping or you're hearing pops and clicks. It's going to affect all methods of playback and recording. So, for instance, if you have a very high buffer setting and you hit the space bar, with a low buffer setting, you hit space bar, it starts playing immediately. With a high buffer setting, there's a delay, right? Similarly, when you wind back or go forward or make changes in the UI, there's going to be a delay. So, it becomes very difficult for audio. Because remember, unlike video, you know, if you're tweaking color in video, it doesn't matter if you sort of see it immediately. Um, you know where you're going. With audio, if I'm making a change to an EQ and I make the change and then I don't hear it for another half a second, it, it, it's very confusing. It's very difficult to mix or to process um, with a very long buffer. So you really want the buffer as low as you can get it. All right, It's going to improve performance overall. And it's not related to memory at all. It's solely related to the communication capabilities of your, of your machine and the, the device that's doing the recording. Now, if you've got your just internal sound card, your internal, uh, you know, whatever Windows uses these days and whatever Mac uses just on the laptop or on those machines, um, like I said, you're just really looking for the sweet spot. And I would try 128 
uh, samples as kind of the starting point there. And if you can get it lower, believe me, it'll be better. It, it is better. Everything will be just a little faster when processing and working. All right? Cool. Okay. So how do we begin? All right. Now, as I mentioned, you can record in the waveform view, which is the standard two-track view that you see here, or the multi-track. We're going to start in the waveform view. This is where most of you will begin. So we'll go File, New, Audio File. Okay. Now, once again, it kind of prompts you with, all right, let's give it a name. So we'll call this Jason AT4050. Here's where you choose your sample rate. Now, again, I'm going to say 48K because you can always convert later. It's going to sound better. It's going to capture more frequencies. You know, you can throw them away later. Better to get more. You know, it's kind of why we shoot 4K, 6K, 8K. We're not, we don't want to really deliver 8K, but the more media you have, the more that you can crop and move around and recompose. Kind of the same thing with, with sample rate up to 96K, all right? So 48K is what I'll choose. Now, this is what I was talking about before. We want mono or stereo. One microphone, one voice. There's no reason not to do mono, okay? Um, you can record stereo. Some microphones, I know I've seen this in the chat here before. Some of you have said, well, I record stereo, and the mic is on the left side, and there's silence on the right side. That's stupid. Yes. <laughs> um, it's by design because one mic channel, one input, one signal, one ear. Now, some of the devices out there are smart enough where they will automatically send the same signal to both ears, to both channels, and you'll have a what appears to be a proper stereo file. There's, if it's a solo voice, there's, there's no reason to do that. You can always convert after the fact. Okay. And again, mono, smaller file size, less heav heavier, less stress on your CPU or your drives when recording. Um, another case in point. Now we're working in 32-bit float. This is our native bit depth. You never have to change this. Uh, this is the, the, the native bit depth here. Now, if someone says, I need a quick voiceover, I need it to be 48K, 16-bit, because they're going to broadcast that like very quickly, here's where you can change that, okay? Um, why not record in 16-bit? 16-bit is what all of our audio files are ultimately delivered as. iTunes, Spotify, um, pretty much, you know, CDs, again. Um, the problem with 16-bit is that if you have to process the audio, noise reduce, add reverb effects and things, 16-bit has a much more limited dynamic range. So again, when we talk about similarities between imagery or video and audio, right, if you're working in raw, right, whether raw stills or raw video, you have that much more latitude for color, right, uh, if, you know, high, high frame rates for playing around with time remapping. It's kind of the same idea with, uh, with bit depth. The greater the bit depth, the greater the, the dynamic range, the more that you can process and affect your audio without degrading that original signal. The default is 32-bit float. I recommend leaving it there until you have to export when you're all done, okay? So don't even change that. So 48K, mono, 32-bit float, click OK. All right? Limoleo says, wow, all right. Now, the first step, uh, oh, and by the way, I need to just modify something here and we'll, we'll come back to this. So um, under your audio channel mapping, okay, I'm back in the preferences here. Now, because my Focusrite device has so many inputs, this microphone isn't necessarily connected into input one. And you can see here for channel mapping, you have your default stereo input. That relates to that waveform view that we're recording into now. And then you have your default outputs. Now, for the waveform view, and you can see here, you know, channel one, mono. Um, this microphone is actually not connected into input one. This is going into input six, I think. Yes, and you can see here, analog six is what currently is being fed by this microphone. Now, this mic over here, which you, can't see, you can kind of see in view, that's analog five. But this mic is six. So I'm going to just change that... Uh, default stereo input here, that input one mono, I'm going to change that to focus right input six. Now, if you have, again, you're using your USB microphone, you're using a headset microphone, you're not going to have to change any of these things. These will, these will follow because you're only working with a mono or two channel device. For a multi-input device, here is how you can sort of uh, change the default mono input. So I'm going to change that to input six mono. 
I don't even have to change the right because I'm recording in mono here. It doesn't matter. And click OK. All right. Make sense? Tracking where the goal is to file or bring it handy, but safely not to change. Yep, exactly. Very good. Very good, actual Kevin. Okay. All right. So we've now set a blank file. We have our device selected. What do we want to do now? Well, we want to check our levels. So you have your meters. Now, your, your UI may not look like this. The default can move around. I have my level meters docked along the side. Often you'll see them uh, docked along the bottom here. And, you know, this is the same, uh, the standard layout of the docking panels, very similar to that of Premiere and After Effects. Very easy to move and, 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 and move these things around. Just depends on where you like seeing them. I like having my levels kind of vertical. Um, so I typically will dock them over here. All right, like that. Ooh, that's very big. Sometimes very big is nice. Okay, so to see your level before you even begin recording, all you have to do is double click inside the level meter. Click, click inside the level meter. And now you can see uh, that we're actually getting some level. Is, is this why people tap the mic to test levels? Absolutely. And this is why you will always hear on stage or in a venue or in a studio, you know, testing, one, two, one, two. Hi, my name is, hello, testing, t -t -t -t. testing, and one, two, three. These are all good things because they're not only gonna test levels, but they're also gonna let the audio engineer know if, if, you're, if you're off axis, if you're too close, if there are popping peas, if it's too hot, you get the idea. Now, for most of your USB microphones, and again, we'll come back to this in just a few minutes, you don't really have any level setting. Uh, you might have a like a control on the device itself. This Logitech has a mute, but it doesn't have any way on the device to increase the amplitude. So for that, you often have to go into your, your system properties. Now again, this is a little bit different whether we're talking Mac or PC. Um, in Windows, it's, you know, if you double click in the bottom right on the, uh, uh, or right click rather on the speaker icon, it'll take you into the standard Windows mixer. This is assuming you're using onboard sound or even some of your USB devices. And you'll often have a slider in there that will allow you to adjust the input. Now, if I selected my, I'm just gonna turn that off for a second. If I selected my, my microphone here, actually here, let me just change that back. Um, here inside the Mac, this is my level setting. So this is allowing me to adjust the level of this headset mic right now. Okay, now you're not hearing it, but you can see if I talk into this loud, 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 there's nothing because the level's all the way down at zero. Bring it back up, bring it back up, bring it back up. Now you can see that we're peaking right around here, right? Okay, so on the Mac, you're gonna have this option inside the sound panel for uh, your internal devices. Now, if I go down to the Plantronics here, same thing. The Plantronics gives me a volume setting right here, okay? Let's rub my fingers together in front of the mic, no damage risk. <laughs> yes. You can hear that little ASMR-y. Okay, so again, on the Mac side, the sound control panel, this is the only place, this is your, this is your one opportunity to set your input level, right? So if it's too quiet and you're recording, you don't know why, go to sound, make this adjustment on the input side, okay? Now you may have noticed my Thunderbolt did not have any input controls. That's because they're all contained in this separate mixer, okay? So again, if you've got an external multi-channel device, it will very likely have some kind of mixing routing panel that's where you adjust levels and things, okay? This process is really important because this is one of the things that most people um, who are trying out audio or trying to record, this is often where it sort of <laughs> gets confusing. Right at the start, like how come there's not enough level? Why is it so quiet? Or why is it so loud, right? I've heard this a lot. All right, let's see. Jan Eric is saying, you've got a Sirius Logic, your late 2013 Sirius Logic sound card. Yeah, integrated audio. Yeah, I mean, all of your integrated audio today, you know, it's it's all it's all okay. I won't say it's bad, and I won't say they're great. Some are pretty good. The Mac one is not bad. Um, some of the PC ones are okay. Some of them are very noisy and bad. I'm sure anyone who's ever tried to plug in, whether a mic input or a line input into various... Uh, 
PC laptops or, or towers over the years, you know, even the old sound blasters, you know, some of them were okay, some of them were very noisy and crummy. So you really just have to you test it out and see. The main thing is you just want to make sure that you've got some healthy level. Now there's a couple different ways to view that. Um, there's a lot of right clicking that happens in Audition and it's very important to know that you can do this pretty much anywhere. If you right click on the level meters here, you'll see that you can show different decibel ranges. Now, without getting super, super technical about decibels, um, we're working in 32-bit float, right? I was talking about that before. So 32-bit float effectively means that you've got 24, 24 bits of audio and then those other eight bits, and I think uh, uh, actual Kevin was just talking about this a minute ago, those are really used for rounding and all the processing and everything that happens. With a 24-bit dynamic range, you're looking at 140 decibels, approximately. 144 decibels of dynamic range, right? So, so think of that as like number of stops on your camera. Um, that's a huge amount of dynamic range. So, so, and when we're working digitally, we're working in what's known as a negative logarithmic scale. So if you happen to notice at my level meters here, the peak... The loudest we can get is zero, right? So it's not like in the, in the analog days where zero was kind of where you wanted to sort of be and then you had six or 10 dB of headroom above that. Digitally, the loudest you can get is zero and the quietest you can get, let's use 24 bit as an, as an example, is negative 144 decibels, technically negative infinity, but negative 144, okay? So where do you want to be when you're recording? Where should those level meters be? Well, you don't want them to go up to zero, okay? Um, not that they can't, and sometimes it happens. You get excitable, hey, ha! Oh, there I, I just clipped right there. It happens. If that's happening a lot, though, you want to attenuate or back off on that input, right? So um, now again, mine is actually on a front panel here and I'm not gonna adjust my microphone because I have this set up for my streaming server here, but that's what you wanna do. You basically wanna be, when I used to work a lot with radio, radio folks, I used to tell them, you know, you kinda wanna keep it, or they used to tell me that they had been told for years, you wanna keep it in the yellow. And by the way, you'll see there's different options here. If I turn on, let me turn off these LED meters. I like it, just this kind of gradient. You want to be somewhere between minus 12 and minus 3. That's ideally where you want most of your voice to fall. It can be quieter, but if you're seeing everything all the way down here at minus 30, you're too quiet and you're probably going to bring up a lot of noise when you make it louder. And obviously if you're too hot, you're just going to be digitally distorting. So you really, ideally, you want to be somewhere between minus 12, minus three. Now, a lot of that has to do with the sensitivity of the microphone, how it picks up. A lot of it has to do with your positioning, right? I mean, I don't even use a pop filter and I still occasionally have popping peas and things, but I speak on mic all the time. So I'm, I know how to account for those things. All of this comes into play, all right? It may seem like a lot, it's daunting, it's confusing. This is why audio sucks, right? Because there's all these little things that like, if they're not right, it's gonna sound bad. But once you know it, it's actually really simple, you know? Hold on, Jan Eric has a whole bunch of questions here. So, Art of Arson, got a terrible hiss hum on your mic. I tried on PC for streaming, could not figure it out for the life of me. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing, Art of Arson, it, and it could have been the input on the integrated sound on your PC. I mean, some of them, and I'm not, I am not hating, please do not misunderstand me, okay? It's just a fact that a lot of those integrated sound, I'm talking years ago, I haven't, I haven't really used PC laptops in quite a few years, but I mean, I've used everything from old IBMs to Lenovo's, used Dell's forever when they were the hot thing, HP workstations, um, and so even some of the newer Dell's I've, I've been privileged to check out. Some of those old ones, the integrated sound, especially the input, was horrible, as exactly as you described. It was buzzy and hummy and noisy and terrible. Um, Nothing you can do about that most of the time except use an external USB sound card, Firewire sound card, Thunderbolt sound card. I mean, you know, those devices weren't, they weren't intended to be recording devices. Play out is pretty much as, as much as you're going to get with those. And you can still do input, but as you noticed, a lot of them are pretty, they sound pretty nasty. Jan's asking, are the current sound blasters good? 
Yeah, you know, I haven't uh, I haven't listened through a Sound Blaster, Jan Eric, in quite a few years. But you know, they were always. I mean, I can't speak for now, but they, they were always, yeah, for gaming and stuff, they were always pretty good. They always, many of them had, you know, multiple out, you know, 5.1 output long before that was standard. So they offered a lot of flexibility that you didn't have with an onboard sound that was much more expensive with very high-end sound cards. So, again, I can't really speak to their quality today. Certainly back in the day for Paul Weaver, they, um, they were good enough. I mean, they were okay, certainly for recording voice, you know. All right. All right, let's see what else we got here. Energy type sessions where the engineer was doing the preamp gain to track it in. Awesomer. Yes, now actual Kevin is talking about preamp gain. Now this is something that I'm not really gonna get too much into here because this doesn't apply to everybody, but the term that I will often drill into new engineers when I'm teaching <laughs> audio is this concept of gain staging. And it's really the microphone into the preamp and getting that level set correctly even before it gets to the sound card to the application um, and this is a process that you really have to you have to watch you have to meter you have to listen and you can do it again with these external cards that I have very accurately and make sure that basically gain staging means that you're getting enough signal into the preamp so it's right in the sweet spot it's right in that yellow but it's not too hot it's not going to distort and it's not too quiet so that you're artificially um, enhancing noise, you're kind of right where you want to be. Um, and that's, again, that's really what you're trying to do when you're kind of setting that input level. All right. Okay. Very cool. All right. So, hey, Adobe Kush. Okay. So now that we've got this set, do you remember what we did? Let's go back to the other step. So file, new, audio file, give it a name, 48K, mono, 32-bit float. We end up with this. Double click on our level meters. Now we can see that we have some signal. Once we have that signal there, all we now have to do, oops, is click record, which we're going to do. Hold on, I'm just gonna hide my, moving my UI here a little bit. What is this hair piece? What is this piece of hair? What is that doing? <laughs> Not a hair piece, a piece of hair. <laughs> Okay, so now I have to put these back on so I can hear myself. So we are now recording, as you can see. Now it's not recording the music that's going behind me because remember I set this to a discrete channel. So it's using input number six, okay? So here we go, let's do a little recording. Hi, I'm Jason Levine and today for Audio 101 we're talking about recording your voice in Adobe Audition. Okay, good. Fairly even as you can see. Let me do one more and I'm gonna leave a little pausing in there. Or actually I'm gonna try and do some popping peas. Hi, this is Jason Levine and today at... Hi, this is Jason Levine and for today's Audio 101 we'll be talking about recording your voice and using pop filters in Adobe Audition. Okay, so when you're done, you click stop and that's it. And now if we wind back here and play this, hi, this is Jason Levine. And today at, okay, or click over here. Hi, I'm Jason Levine. And today for Audio 101, we're talking about recording your voice in Adobe Audition. Okay, recorded. All right, that's it. All right, if we wanted to continue where we left off or keep on going, again, we wanted to double check levels, come over to my level meters, double click in here, check my levels again, hit record, okay, keep on moving. Now let's go ahead and record from some of those other devices because I want us to also compare the sound. Let me just check what I said here. Hi, I'm Jason Levine and today for Audio 101 we're talking about recording your voice in Adobe Audition. Okay, excellent. All right. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to switch over to the earbuds, all right? So we're gonna go back to preferences, audio hardware, and this time we're going to change, whoops, we're going to change the input to built-in microphone, okay? Now, you're noticing kind of a unique situation here that we allow you to do, which is the input is one device, the output is another device. This is not uncommon in the studio, this is not highly recommended for most for most things because it can be a little problematic when we're talking about 
master clock, this sample clock. Um, ultimately, Audition chooses what it thinks is the best choice. Because we're monitoring the output here, I will typically set the output of the, of the master clock. I'll set the master clock to the device that it's outputting. The focus right is going to have a much more reliable clock being an external device than our internal built-in microphone anyway. Um, again, it sets this based on what it thinks is best, but typically you'll want this to be the output device if you're mixing in and out, all right? So I'm recording with the headset mic, but we're gonna hear it back through the focus, right? We're gonna leave everything else the same here, okay? Because again, when we get into multi-track, that's where I'll change this buffer size so you can hear what it's doing, all right? So built-in microphone, okay? We're gonna make a new audio file. We'll call this Jason built-in headset, 48K mono, 32-bit. Okay, let's double click. All right. Now, uh, here, I'm gonna just have to move this a little bit. So, to use the headset mic properly, you really wanna wear these, okay? They're, they're designed to pick up sound um, you know, from a certain distance from your ear. Here, I'm just gonna move this so you can still kind of see me here. All right. So let's see what our levels look like here. All right, looks, it looks a little hot. So again, this is where I'm gonna go into our system preferences. Sound, I'm gonna look at the external microphone. And yeah, you can see I'm, I'm peaking there. It's way too hot. So let's just back this off. These tend to be pretty sensitive, but Perhaps surprisingly, they're actually decent. They're decent microphones. I'm gonna turn this so that you guys are hearing me too. <laughs> okay, all right. So, here we are. You're seeing my levels into this headset. Now it looks a little bit better. Looks like we're peaking around minus four, minus six. So let's go ahead and record. Hi, this is Jason Levine. And today we're talking about Audio 101, recording your voice in Adobe Audition. That was not exactly what I said before, close enough. Hi, this is Jason Levine, and for today's Audio 101, we'll be talking about recording your voice into Adobe Audition. Stop, take these off. Right. He's back on here, all right, and let's take a listen. Hi, this is Jason Levine, and today we're talking about Audio 101, recording your voice in Adobe Audition. That was not exactly what I said before. Okay. Close you can also hear all the <laughs> movement of that on my exactly hair and everything. Before, close enough. But you can hear that the sound is actually very clean, albeit perhaps a bit thin. Hi, this is Jason Levine, and for today's Audio 101, we'll be talking about recording your voice into Adobe Audition. Now, if we wanted to compare the sound of this to the one we just recorded, uh, you got a couple of ways that you can do that. In your editor panel, there's this little... This is a, a flyout menu here where you can swap between the open files at the moment. You can also just go into the files panel and double click. So if we wanted to hear what the Audio Technica version sounded like. Hi, I'm Jason Levine. And today for Audio 101, we're talking about recording your voice in Adobe Audition. Now, if you're saying it's not loud enough, yeah, because this is raw. We haven't, we haven't changed, we haven't done anything to process this yet. Let me, let me mute these so you can actually hear the very clean sound of these recordings. In fact, you know what, I'll wait until we do the headset one because I want you to compare all three together. So let's do that now. Let's do a recording with the headset. So once again, back in Audition, Preferences, Audio Hardware. Let's change the default input to uh, the Plantronics. Now I think it may tell me, yeah, I may have to do a, a sample rate change. Ooh, how is this gonna work now? because I'm, I'm streaming everything 48K and I'm connected digitally. Okay, hold on. I have to think about this for a second. This might, this might kick me out. Crapo. All right. We'll do it for one second and then it'll be fine. Okay, bear with me here. Okay. I'm going to change this to 44.1.
All right. Uh, that's because of how I have this routed for my streaming. Talking about a sample clock. <laughs> well, the sample clock of the Thunderbolt is very strong. <laughs> it's not going to let me do. Um, it's not going to let me do this. So let me think for a second here. I think if I switch, maybe if I switch both of these. Bear with me for a second. You you may you may lose me here. Just hold on, okay? Switch this to Plantronics. There we go. Ha ha! That did work. Okay. Why I had to go kind of a backwards way, I don't exactly know. All right. So just to verify, Plantronics is set, and we'll just change the output back before I before I play it back for you. Okay. Now we'll have to do the same thing with setting levels in here, no doubt. So file, new audio file. Call this Jace USB mic. All right. <clears throat> Can I talk about the psychedelic brownie and noise brain altering functions that used to be in Coletta that I can't find an audition? Did the FDA make Adobe take them out? Uh, the FDA did not make Adobe take them out. Adobe made made us take them out <laughs> and what uh, what he's referring to actual Kevin is referring to is we used to have something called um, oh what was it called now oh I forget the name of the filter but yes we had a filter at one point um, that could do all kinds of uh, what's what's uh, biofeedback and um, I don't want to say mind control, but wave generation for relaxation and these kinds of things. And I don't even remember the name of the filter. But um, yes, when Audition was acquired, formerly Cool Edit, uh, there was something questionable about it, and we had some presets and things, and they they made us they made us take them out. <laughs> so yeah, sorry about that. Okay. So once again, uh, the level on this is super, super hot. So we're gonna back this off probably to around, looks like we can even go to under 50%. It's still very, very responsive, okay? Very, very, very responsive. So now when we look at the levels here, they should be a little bit better. And of course you can adjust the level by just pulling this further away from your, from your mouth. <laughs> I almost said from your mouth hole. Okay, mind control. Yeah, there was a whole section in the manual. Art of Arson, Trip and Balls filter. Yeah, it was really cool. I wish I could remember. Uh, I could remember what we uh, what it was. Okay, it'll come back to me. And re-engineer it. Yeah, we'll see. All right, so let's do a quick recording here. We've got the USB mic connected. Hi, this is Jason Levine, and for today's Audio 101, we will be talking about recording through different microphones in Adobe Audition CC. Okay, and we'll just do that one, okay? All right, so now we're going to go back to our hardware. We're just gonna switch everything back to the focus. You're with me here, hold on. Okay, and we're back. All right, cool. Okay, so now, this is where now we can start to compare the sounds of these. And then I'm going to show you recording in the multi-track very quickly in our last 10 minutes and show you kind of um, how, that, how that's different and also um, how the buffer settings affect what you're doing. Okay, so let's take a listen to the USB recording that we just did. And in fact, just to kind of level the playing field, Let's normalize everything to minus one. Again, we're not affecting the dynamics. We're just gonna look at the loudest peak and globally make everything louder until it hits minus one, okay? Or the loudest peak hits minus one, and that's what we did right here. So we'll do that for all three of these files. All right, let's re repeat the last command. Oh, this one, it looks like it's peaking at zero. We're actually gonna make that one smaller. And uh, let's go to the built-in headset. This is also command R or control R for repeat last command just to bring everything in. Okay, so let's take a listen first to the Audio-Technica 4050 condenser XLR microphone. 
Oh, and here, and I'll mute myself so you can hear them very clean. Hi, I'm Jason Levine, and today for Audio 101, we're talking about recording your voice in Adobe Audition. Hi, I'm Jason Levine, and today for Audio 101, we're talking about recording your voice in Adobe Audition. Okay, so you could hear that one there. Let's go to the uh, USB mic, and I'll mute myself here again so you can hear that. Hi, this is Jason Levine, and for today's Audio 101, we will be talking about recording through different microphones in Adobe Audition CC. Now, right there, you could hear a pretty fundamental difference in sound, right? So this is what I talk about a lot. Um, and that wasn't a cheap uh, Plantronics headset either. It's just that, you know, it's not meant to be a microphone that one would sing on. So fidelity-wise, it's a little mid-rangey. It's actually got a lot of mid-range because by design, it's kind of meant to cut through. So as a gaming headset, right, you're, you're in a headset, you're listening to others talk. It's going to make those vocal frequencies cut through so that it's not bombarded by all the other sound of sound effects and music and everything else. Does it make for a great voiceover microphone? Mm, you know, not necessarily, but it can get the job done. All USB mics, all mics are going to sound a little bit different. But this headset style, this particular one, you can hear it very clearly. It's it's just kind of mid-rangey. Hi, this is Jason Levine, and for today's audio LARP dog. we will be talking about recording through different microphones in Adobe Auditions. <laughs> you can also hear my phone ringing, yeah. I know, I forgot to unplug it again today. All right, and then lastly, the built-in uh, uh, earbud mics, or rather, sorry, the... Um, they're not built in. Using the built in sound card, but with the headset, Apple earbud headset. Take a listen to that. Hi, this is Jason Levine, and for today's Audio 101, we'll be talking about recording your voice into Adobe Audition. Now, aside from the sort of ringing bangles, <laughs> it sounds like jewelry in there. Um, as I mentioned, the sound of the little headset mic, it's pretty good. Hi, this is Jason Levine, and today we're talking about Audio 101, recording your voice in Adobe Audition. All right, so there's the earbuds. Here's the Plantronics. Hi, this is Jason Levine, and for today's Audio 101, we will be talking about recording through different microphones in Adobe Audition. And here is the condenser microphone here. Hi, I'm Jason Levine, and today for Audio 101, we're talking about recording your voice in Adobe Audition. Okay? Fundamental different sound. If I had to say, if I had to pick the, the, the low-cost leader, you can't see it. Damn it. Right here. These, these guys. Um, and I've seen a lot of streamers use the Apple earbuds because they just sound good. They sound pretty good, you know? Not to say that USB mics can't, not to say that Plantronics headsets can't, but as, a, as like something that many people have, and I, I know a lot of different devices, all in your Android phones, everything comes with some kind of headset. That's kind of a, a good go-to if you don't have a, a desktop microphone. I, I'm really into those. In condenser, we trust. Limoleo, indeed. Hey, Sayaluna. Yes. I mean, there's, there's, no, there's no question, right? So if I had to pick between two, you know, it would be either my proper microphone when I'm in the studio or those headsets. I, I, uh, I mean, the, um, the earbuds. I seldom pull out the USB uh, Plantronics anymore. Um, also, it's not very comfortable. But again, all of them will sound a little bit different. And as I've mentioned many times with my gratuitous Harry Potter references, um, the microphone chooses the wizard, Harry. You know, I mean, really, you... you Every mic is going to sound different on everybody's voice. So you have to find the one that really kind of works for you. All right. Limo Leo saying, you've got the Zoom H4n. Only problem is it also records all your PC noise. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to get into noise reduction today. That's another class. But I will show you uh, next Monday how maybe we'll do noise reduction. Then I'm going to pull up. I'm going to put up a schedule. Um, when I uh, stream Friday, I'll, I'll show what the schedule will be moving forward. I haven't actually come up with it yet. Well, I did, but I, it's not really organized. Well, it is, but it's not. Anyway. <laughs> did you see what just happened there? <laughs> yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, maybe. All right. <laughs> Harry Potter reference, yes. The one chooses the wizard, Harry. I always, I'm always doing Harry Potter references. Can't help myself. All right. 
So, um, okay, multi-track recording, and then we're at the top of the hour. So do we feel comfortable now just getting a microphone, setting it up, and recording into the waveform view? We feel good. Do you go through recording levels to minimize noise today, or is that in a future lesson too? Well, yes, now I talked about just before we actually hit record, I did talk about gain staging. I, have, I showed where, for different microphones, how you set the levels differently. So for instance, my AT4050, this is going through a Focusrite Claret 8. So I have you know a, a, a complete discrete mixer here. I have onboard mixing controls. I have to gain stage this through this external box properly. Um, for the USB and built-in um, onboard sound, whether you're in Mac or PC, that usually happens in you know the Windows sound mixer, which is the speaker icon in the bottom right of your taskbar. Right click there and you can open up the little mixer. Or in, on the Mac, um, it's the sound control panel. It's not the control panel. The sound uh, preference. And um, you actually set it here. So again, the headset. Here's where I set the headset mic input. The uh, microphone. This is where I set for the earbuds. This is where I set the level there. And if I choose something like the Focusrite, it doesn't show the controls here because it has its own mixer. So yes, that's all. That was a little bit earlier, and you'll be able to watch that on the, um, on the VOD. Okay. Yeah, sorry, LARP. You can, it'll be there, though. You'll be able to see it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's see. BK, I can't decide. Yeah. Yeah, bad audio, you know? It's, uh, it just, it, it makes me not want to watch something. That's for sure. It's true. Very true. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. So um, we've got a last couple of minutes here. So I want to do some uh, multi-track recording. But do we feel we feel good about this? It's easy. And once you have it set up, as I described, it's, what did we say? It's three clicks. Well, it's a couple more clicks, but it's really three steps. It's file new, audio file, double click to set your levels, and then record. All right. Now, if we're going to do a multi-track, and this will be a whole other session because really this is about just recording voice here. But I, I'm going to make a multi-track session. File new multi-track. Call this voice test. I'm not going to use any template. I'll do it at 48K, 32-bit. Now the master is stereo. What that means is that the master session itself is in stereo. We don't want the master to be mono. You seldom ever do that anymore. Oh, I have to change the target directory. Oh, because it's blank. All right. Let's just go ahead and stick this on the desktop and click OK. All right, now here is where I just wanted to very briefly talk about the buffer settings, okay? Um, we're gonna go into track one. Okay, and I wanna make sure that I've got my devices set up correctly, and I do, all right? And here, in this upper tab, we have our input and output devices, all right? Now again, I'll cover this in another class, but I just wanna show you very quickly here a little bit about so that you can really hear what longer buffers do. So we're gonna do input six, and I'm gonna do all of this with this same microphone so that you can you can kind of hear the difference, okay? All right. So let's do 64, 128, 512, 10.24. Or 2048, that's really extreme. I think you'll, you'll, you'll get it by then, but okay. So I'm gonna start with setting a buffer of 64 samples. I think, I think my machine can handle that. So I'm gonna go into record, okay. Oh, and here, I wanna just record into a mono track as well. Delete this track. Again, we'll, we'll discuss multi-track recording later. Um, this was more just to prove the point about buffers okay okay so now i am actually when i hit this i button i am monitoring my input all right now i actually technically need to mute it here so now you're hearing me directly through the software which means if i increase the volume here this is actually adjusting what's what's going in you're hearing exactly what's going into the track so when i record this now it's fine i can see my level it sounds good i know exactly what's happening and what's being recorded and how it's going to how it's going to play back okay that's at 64 samples now i don't know what you can hear 
It might sound slightly chorused, maybe just a little bit, not enough to be bothersome. It's not certainly slapping back or echoing. Um, this is a pretty legit, legit level of latency, okay? Let's go ahead and increase that to 128. Actually, that'll be, you won't be able to really hear much of a change there. Let's go to 512, okay? So I'm gonna take myself out of record, make that change, give me one second here. You're not gonna hear me for a second. Okay, so now you can hear me and can you also hear that I am, now I sort of sound like there's a delay, like an echo on me. Well, one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready now, go cat, go, but don't you step on my blue suede shoe. Now that isn't actually being recorded that way, but again, it's this latency, right? It's giving the sound card enough time to kind of speed up and start rocking. The difference is that now on my headphones, I'm hearing this slapback, and I think you're probably hearing it on the input too. You guys hear that? All right. And that, as a singer, that's going to be very difficult. But let's go to the extreme. I'm going to turn this off, go to 2048. Hold on one second. Here we go. Just you'll, I'll drop out for one second. I'll come back in. Okay, so now do you hear what's, now this is like, oh, it's like half a second delayed. I can't, I can't even, I, 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 it's, I can't even talk because I'm so far behind myself. There's no way that I could actually do anything like this and monitor what I'm doing. Are you guys hearing that? Is it, you're hearing it sort of appear late? In fact, hold on. Now, now you, can you can really, really hear, hear it. it. Echoing, echoing right? right do you, you hear, hear the, the slapback slap that's, that's, that's not a delay that's not an intentional, intentional well it's, it's one for the money no, no. That's, that's what, what happens, happens when the buffer, the buffer is set, set too, too high, high. <laughs> you guys get it <laughs> okay did that make sense see you later alligator goodbye paulina thanks for joining me this morning all right, could you guys and ladies hear that? It's in your brain, Art of Arson, I'm in your brain. So could you all hear that? Could you hear the slap back? Could you hear that, that delay? So that is effectively what happens as you raise the buffer if you're recording and monitoring. It's going to be very difficult. In other words, imagine you're overdubbing, right? You're gonna overdub some background vocals or a bass or something else and you have to be in time. Well, if you're hearing yourself delayed it's gonna be very hard to sing in time. So that's why you wanna get that buffer as low as possible, uh, especially for recording. Once you're editing and mixing, it can be a little bit higher. You don't want it too high because then again, as you make adjustments, if they're not happening in real time, your brain's gonna get very messed up. It's not gonna know what's happening. And it's very easy to do with audio. You get lost and I've done this myself. I've done it on stream where I'm adjusting an EQ and I'm like, okay, yeah, that sounds, it's not, it doesn't really sound so different. It sounds, it's kind of transparent. And I'm like increasing amplitude of a frequency. I'm going, it's like, I'm not, it's amazing. I'm not hearing any difference. It wasn't turned on, right? Well, or, or <laughs> in the case of a high buffer, it's happening so much later that you just kind of forget. You zone out. You definitely heard that. Excellent. Be really good with some crackling. So is, yes, <laughs> slapback is not good. Exactly. So now you know how to fix that. Audio hardware, IO buffer size. Again, the default at 128 is pretty decent. I don't think you'll you'll have too many complaints there. Ideally, you probably want to be around 64 if your machine can handle it. Um, but like I said, 128 tends to do everything you need to do. So my friends, for this first hour, I hope you enjoy this very comprehensive, lot of tech nerdy info. Did you guys dig that? Or use an analog out from analog mic to monitor for tracking actual Kevin. Yes, now again, Depending upon now this device, of course, I have direct monitor. Depending upon how you have everything routed, there's lots of different ways to monitor the input signal. Correct. 
because most will be using likely a USB mic or, or uh, again, some kind of built-in control where there isn't a lot of routing flexibility, um, that's the best way to combat that, especially if you have to monitor yourself live. As you saw before, when we were just recording directly into, uh, into the edit, the waveform view here, you know, I don't really need to monitor myself while I'm inputting here. I mean, I'm monitoring it visually. I don't need to hear it necessarily. Um, I'll hear it once I start editing and, and, and cutting it up and doing whatever. All right. Oh, awesome. Oh, that's great to hear, Admiral Shane. Thank you. Thank you, Art of Arson. Short but sweet. Hey, yeah. Uh, Poopshard54. Yes, Audition does have scripting. I don't, I don't remember exactly what SoundForge offers, but yes, you can script uh, effects processes. You can batch process. Um, yes, it's very cool, actually. And since the beginning. Next audio lesson will be this Friday, uh, Friday at 9 a.m. So join me this Friday here on the Adobe channel at 9 a.m. Pacific time for part two, Audio 101, all right? Bum Ninja, you dig, you dig, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Okay, cool. All right, everybody, so we're gonna now segue over into Premiere, but to do that, I wanna stop the video, I wanna stop the, uh, the stream and I will restart. So. You may have to refresh if you're in the browser. You may have to refresh the browser. If you're on uh, a mobile device, you probably will have to in and out there or refresh it. Um, but I will be back in seconds. So thank you again for joining me for Audio 101 Part 1 today, recording your voice through a microphone into Audition CC. And I'll be back in 20 seconds uh, working on some editing in Premiere Pro. All right, everybody. Thank you. I'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned.